This is Intel. Okay, Booga Booga gets scared. Uh, yeah, or k- kind of. <laughs> or it's Intel. Booga Booga get terrified. Right. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. That was me. I'm Vince Stone. And over there is Pedro Mateus. And the guy in the middle. Sometimes he's high, sometimes he's low. It just depends on how many times he reboots that laptop and cuts on the <laughs> phantom power. <laughs> is one Jordan Swang. Together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. You know him, you love him. Yeah, Cocaine Voltron, baby. What have you been up to, lads? Two canes, man. Bifurcated canes. That's, uh... I've been playing around with a bunch of things. I'm all hopped up on drugs, gentlemen. What kind of drugs? Fun drugs or just boring drugs? Uh, just a boring drug. I, you would consider it. You know what? It, it would be an interesting um, nicotine. Mm. Got some nicotine. Haven't have, have fucked around with the nicotine in, uh, since like December. Because okay. my, my dealer has been out of stock. Mm. <laughs> hey, and they did want some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> right like what would be the option oh no i can just go straight to the store and buy cigarettes all day long but if i want some um you know extracted chemically extracted food grade safe uh nicotine oh no we got to jump through hoops because think of the children okay food grade and safe nicotine i mean in low enough quantities it's technically safe yes <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, spicy basically <laughs> you know you don't want to buy your um nicotine you know uh from uncle slappy's uh, nicotine yeah uh, you know bill bill's vacuum extracted nicotine yeah, <laughs> yeah. Com- comes in like so, a fucking wd-40 can <laughs> don't worry about it i cleaned it out you got to get it through a chemical supply company and there's a bunch of like extra paperwork per state and have it delivered and signed for it and all that and uh, the place i've been using has been out forever i'm like i wonder if there's anybody else is like got this and i found this other place like oh fine and you know it showed up and i signed all my things and I got it, but I, I, I get the, uh, like the nicotine strength because I only want to do it like once a year, the stuff that'll kill toddlers. <laughs> so you don't want to get it. You got to, you got to put on the full breaking bad outfit to handle the stuff. You got to get the respirator and all that and you mix it and you break it down. You make a bunch of little things of it. Anyway, moral of the story is the first time I've had nicotine in like three or four months and I can absolutely feel my brain like switch gear because mm. it's a nootropic. Pretty awesome. That's that. That's why people like it. That's why people will literally inhale burning leaves for the sake of it. Yes. <laughs> um. So anyway, if I like start vomiting uncontrollably or something, maybe I got a bad patch. Um, maybe I just keel over. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, huh, had a good run. Good night. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, there's that. Also, I finished uh, most of my recording. I had to re-record a, a silly little fun kind of entertaining video for a um external ssd caddy holder usb you know one of those little things and uh something strange happened to it that i thought was worth making like a little three or four minute video i had to refilm it because i didn't realize how mangled and gnarled this thumb was the other day Mm. when i filmed it and i'm doing it and i'm like filming it like halfway through and like it starts bleeding and i'm like "Uh oh all right (laughs) so we're gonna have to give that a couple extra days of heal time which i did so uh, maybe that'll be out Monday or Tuesday. You It'll put your blood, fun. sweat, and tears into this video. It it was frustrating. <laughs> it was frustrating. I'm like, damn it, I'm leaking everywhere. And you ever just have a, like a cut that you think's sealed, and you like bump it the wrong way, and you're like, yep. mm-hmm. well, we're back to that. Okay. It's, it's always great. Like a day later, and you're like, ah, it's gotta have healed up. Nope. It, it hits <laughs> differently after you spend an hour and a half tearing things down and resetting them for that type of shot you're like we just wasted all that time today okay hmm. womp, womp. <laughs> what what I, I need to do is get like the little robot pincer hands like man uh, that'd be really entertaining to try to watch to do um no let's not do that how about you jordan swang <laughs> um outside of i heard audio is now once again working on linux yes <laughs> i had I, I had some brief problems but they've been resolved the the, the, the the perils of multi computer sound setup. I uh, know, but uh, we finished uh, Borderlands three on Thursday. Uh, we went through the uh, we finished up the final mission. Uh, at no point does your character show up in any of the final cinematics because you are completely incidental to the plot of that game. Mm-hmm. Yay! 
Um, so yeah, uh, that's done. Strange Brigade. We're starting it up on Thursday. I have not played this. I've actually just installed it today. So we'll uh, we'll see how that is. That goes. the one that was on like really good sale? Yeah, it's uh, it's the Indiana Jones Left for Dead puzzle solve one. Runs natively uh, on Vulcan. So, yeah, I yeah. bought a copy of that uh, just because uh, on your recommendation. I'm like, oh, we'll, we'll see. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like Tomb Raider with more guns. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, tomorrow, uh, today today is the last day of my deload. So tomorrow I get to see if I break my spine squatting 600 pounds, benching 400 pounds, and deadlifting 650 pounds. So Remember to like squeeze your butt cheeks really tight before you do that. I will. <laughs> that, that's, that's a very important cue. That's how you know it's ready. That's when it's done. Yeah. Oh. Pedro, you've had adventures in um, audio under Linux as well. With your, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, although mine were, uh, <laughs> well, it, the, my setup is far simpler than what Jordan has going on, but I had, uh, I'd been having issues with the Duet 2 and the 6.1 kernel because whenever I did a cold boot, uh, or just instead of just a reboot, just actually turn the PC off and then turn it on again. The audio coming out of that, as soon as it landed on the operating system, would be garbled. Mm. Completely garbled. You could tell that the thing that was supposed to be playing was playing in the background, but it was all mangled. So the only fix was to either reboot or just unplug and plug it back in. Not ideal when you're dealing, you know, with sensitive... Uh, or, or at least very expensive Pedro, hardware. Pedro, couldn't you have uh, created a UDEV rule and set a timer on it to, um... Uh, no, it has to be physically unplugged, or the entire operating system. I, I tried just shutting down that USB port and then bringing it back up. Mm -hmm. Well, that entire bus of USB ports, but that didn't work. Uh, it had to, like, physically r stop receiving power for a little bit and then come back. But... That was with 6.1, and Nobara, thank you, Aggie, is now on um, 6.2. So that's no longer an issue. <laughs> that's good. I was just writing the 6.0 kernel until the 6.1 uh, was done, and it moved to 6.2, and we're there now, so we're good. Mm. Well, something I'm always amazed is able to maintain such medium fidelity is our horse that we drag out each and every that's because... single because it has the good windows drivers now we had we finally installed with the good windows that. drivers yeah we finally uninstalled that hacky win linux operating system it's the steam oh man i hope that worked for everybody at home um because <laughs> we, we didn't hear it on our end yeah <laughs> no we shouldn't hear it now okay oh, okay all right we shouldn't hear it now but it's <laughs> It's taking it down from like three individual ones and like feeding it into one. A long story that'll put people to bed. Let's talk about drivers. What we're all here for? Windows. Windows drivers, drivers for our Steam Deck. <laughs> oh man, I am so happy to report that you know Steam has not forgotten about it. Now, unfortunately, there's still no way to dual boot your Steam Deck with Windows and uh, Linux, and that is kind of like, oh man, that kind of sucks. You can use other Linux distros, just not SteamOS. Right, and they point out like the SteamOS <laughs> installer that provides a dual boot wizard, it just isn't quite ready yet. Uh, if you want to get Windows up and running, you got to do your product key during installation because you need internet access because there's no Wi-Fi drivers at this point. I'm like, yep. oh no, that's sad. Uh, they... Valve says, hey, man, by the way, you know, if you do get it up and running, you can put Windows 10 on, Windows 11 on, both are supported. And I just want to say, like, a year later, it's good to see that uh, Microsoft Windows on a Steam Deck is still just an absolute dumpster fire. I mean, excellent job there. I'm sure that made a lot of people happy that bought the Steam Deck for their Windows 10 gaming machine. However, gentlemen, what are your thoughts on this? Because I fear that this is yet... Just another example of big Linux keeping indie operating systems like Windows down and preventing them from gaining traction. And Valve, you, you take no small hand in this. Really, really putting the heel <laughs> I, to old yes. Windows. This is just for like people who really, really need to play Destiny on the go. About dual booting though, like I wonder like how much Windows would fight that because like it already tries to overwrite the master boot record with its own shit. It already does whenever yeah. there's a big uh, update. It does. So that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, so that's why you need to have two distinct drives. So like having them live on the same SSD, it's probably going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't think Valve can fix that internally. I don't think there's as yeah, at least. Uh... 
uh, audio works on uh, Windows now. You know, hey, <laughs> flipping that yeah. joke around they a little bit. Up. <laughs> you you have to manually download uh, and right click install the actual in files. There isn't just you know an a an exe or an msi you can run. You need to get the actual in files and right click install them. That that's. That's manual and this shit. Is a, this is a true thing what Pedro is saying, because I looked at that and went, oh, hell no. Um, I wouldn't be bothered with that. I, I would much rather apply my time to try to get like Haiku up and running on the Steam Deck, something interesting. And you know, this has to be a little bit maddening for people who do want, because there, there's uh, all of the Steam Deck competitors, air quotes around that, are you know, astronomically priced, you know, starting at like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars There's... This is a lot of work right now, and still kind of dodgy to turn your Steam Deck into a Windows gaming machine. Into Jordan's point, for like what the one game or two games, or maybe you're just violently. But if you're so violently allergic to Linux, you probably don't have the skills necessary to install an operating system in the first place. Then again, this could just end up being a learning experience for you. So maybe it's win win. Just, just gotta buy an Ioneo, and then you can yeah. you can enjoy yeah, the, the faster Ionio CPU Air, that drains uh, the battery like someone faster. In, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ioneo Air that someone in uh, Discord bought. I can't remember. Was it North Ranger? I don't know. And why uh, but- in the world would you want to have a dual boot to make benchmarks? That's why. <laughs> to, to yes. play, play, play Destiny to play Fork Knife because you can't mm-hmm. play it on your PUBG. iPhone anymore. PUBG. Oh, man. <laughs> People still playing PUBG? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's probably like the <laughs> yeah. second largest game on Steam. Yeah. Okay. It, it's no, you, know, you don't hear a lot about it anymore. For no. a while, people were. I mean, you don't hear a lot about Fortnite anymore either. It's... <laughs> I, I do because I talk to you guys all the time, and you're always talking about Fortnite. <laughs> I, man, you know me. I get up in the morning. I would send you, "Hey, what's yeah. up, stud? Have you heard about the latest?" Yeah, you know, the Fortnite. Knife. Yeah. Every, every, every day, the the Google chat goes off. And like, have you seen the latest Fortnite news? God damn, this game. <laughs> <laughs> the latest Fortnite news.com. Check it out right after you're done downloading the latest version of Proton GE. I'm still going to call yeah. it Proton GE. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah now, now that we have technically G Proton 752, and then the uh, very quick uh, update for 53 to include the um, Star Citizen fix. But yeah, the, the, the bulk of the stuff is uh, with uh, 752, which has the Diablo 4 proper fix, the Halo Infinite. Uh, fix and patches and the one that i was really looking forward to the proton fix for outlaws plus a handful of missions which i'm like okay no i, I love outlaws it's that's like the latest game that uh lucas arts released on the old dark forces engine which still doesn't work on uh, tfe which is m- most unfortunate so it's like okay maybe maybe it'll actually work properly now and i can set the uh, keyboard bindings correctly so i can play through the game all over again. No, the, the, the as soon as you open the, uh, you click on the keyboard settings in the options menu, the window shows up in like the corner, and you can't actually click on anything. And it's the game is only rendering in four by three, so like three quarters of the window are just cut off. Why don't you it's, want it running in four by three? What, what's wrong with you? You need to experience the way it's meant to be experienced. It's four by three. What's wrong with letterbox? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Some, some people are allergic to letter, letterboxing. I literally have no problem with it. Uh, it yeah, is nice, though, that the... the, thing. Uh, the um, you can set... You can work around it by uh, effectively disabling the Proton uh, full screen hack that it does. You, you, you just enable... Uh, go to wide CFG and tick the box to render the game in its own X window. And then it works properly. But I want to have to do that. I want to just, you know, click install. I want the dream. <laughs> well, at least you don't, at least you don't have to PC your host and just run DOS. <laughs> because that would be worse. <laughs> well, uh, at least if you want to play some Star Citizen uh, with the EAC on, you don't have to edit your host file anymore. That's a that's always fun when the right. instruction is like, by the way, you got to spoof this to be something completely different. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, I see that you brought up Diablo 4. Either you like Diablo diehards because I've been watching, you know, the standard uh, rogues gallery of people I watch that uh, stream on Twitch. They are very much into Diablo for like everyone's got thoughts. They're like, well, I don't know if I can play Diablo 4 after what they did to Diablo 3. Hmm. Well, okay. So um, I, pl- I played Diablo 3 back when uh, it first came out. I was, in, I was in the beta for that one as well. That happened a week before the fucking my exams, which was fun because it's <laughs> like, oh, I really want to play, but I really don't want to repeat this semester. So what do I do? Um, but yeah, like um, it, I, I don't know. It, it looks it looks good. 
I'm kind of, I, I, I'm not a big fan of Blizzard for their, their business practices and stuff, so I don't usually go out of my way to buy their games. But, like, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I've, I haven't, I haven't dug that deep into the, uh, the Diablo four, um, like gameplay stuff. I'm a big fan of the lore though. So I'm definitely going to be in that wiki trying to figure out what the hell happens. All right. Yeah. I, I, I know Diablo exists and it's the top down. You spin around a lot. It's, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh, like, if, if, if I, if I do start playing, you're, you're going to lose me for a couple days. Cause I'm just going to be like, click, 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 click. I, 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 I spent runs. a lot of time in my youth just playing a lot. Of All right. All right. Uh, the people who made Diablo good are no longer there. Uh, they're the ones who made Torchlight, yes. <laughs> yeah, now the people who made Torchlight good are no longer there, and yeah. now we get nothing. <laughs> well, so now we, you get we, whatever Diablo 4 is. Can we uh, talk about like, Torchlight is infinite. <laughs> those are some of the things we are getting in the form of new games. Yes, we got Le Resistance. It's coming soon. You can request access to the beta. And uh, if you ever played Nidhogg, it is a Nidhogg-like with some fancier uh, fighting game mechanics. You basically have to defeat your guy, your opponent um, over and over and over again because the, the win condition is really you get to, you have to get to the other side of the map. So even if you lose a bunch, you can you respawn and you just have to start pushing your opponent all the way back. Um, they, they're designing this as sort of like a fantasy strike-esque uh, intro into fighting games. Here's a way to like get people into the mechanics of it without having to like learn how to perfectly fucking execute combos and learning all your switch ups and mashups and whatever. Um, so it, it's got that rollback netcode too, which is uh, which is a nice thing. This has online multiplayer, but not for the early, not for the uh, early access. Yeah, no, I mean this is uh, something we got to bring up. It might have rollback netcode, but you wouldn't know it because the uh, open beta that is available right now is available on Linux. This is something that got rolled out uh, earlier this week. Um, you know, even though this will eventually have single player online PvP, split screen, cross platform multiplayer, along with everything else. I'm just taking a look at it in system requirements. Don't even list um, Linux yet, but mm-hmm. it is there. Um, it tried to lock up when I had it in full screen, but I had to shove it into a uh, game scope because I tried to shut it down. It went full screen. I'm like, hey, that's good. That's good. And played around with it and tried to shut it down and it wasn't having it. So I had to like crack open top. They're like, what's your PID? I got to take you down, man. Um, but it's got that sound back, TM. The one from like uh, the rapping robots from Jackbox that. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that dun, dun, when you change the venues, I was like, I've heard that before, right? Yeah. And as we brought up, there's no online multiplayer in the demo, so it's kind of useless right now. It's just like, hey, I can move around, I can jump, and that's what I did. And I like beat up on a CPU compo- uh, opponent that didn't do anything. Xbox controller it worked, and uh, really, all it did was uh, reinforce. It's like I absolutely, positively don't need to buy a fight stick. <laughs> what? <to>? Yeah, no. <laughs> not good. I like their, uh, you know, Street Fighter m- meets uh, Nidhogg type of situation. I like Nidhogg because it was very much a one hit. If you got one proper hit on the enemy, they would die. But here, you, there's a there's a HP bars along the top. That's mm-hmm. I can't help but feel like that detracts a little Pedro, bit from the. <laughs> that's because you're a dyed in the wool melty blood fan. <laughs> Which is a game, apparently. That's oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it, it's fucking some French bread type moon. It's it's some Guilty Gear type shit anime fighter. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, Melty, um, and not necessarily Melty Blood, but Melty is a genre in itself. <laughs> what a, what a, game what a, what a, yeah. Uh We got, uh, we got some sad news. <laughs> Big ambitions. No longer supporting Linux. Uh, what, what, what is their quote? Um, the reason, uh, the reason is, uh, we experienced nerds, a very high it? amount of non gameplay related bugs, H- random crashing, high VRAM issues, file access issues, considering the tiny percentage of players that benefit from this build, sinking development hours into proving this build doesn't seem fair to the rest of our player base. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really seem fair that we have to spend our time fixing our broken Linux build that we sold to people for money. <laughs> Things just work on Proton. You know, you, you bought this game because it has native Linux support ostensibly, but, you know, fuck that shit. I don't know, man. I mean, I look at it like this. Uh, you know, unlike a lot, and I do mean a lot, we'll, we'll see developers going to be like, I'm no longer supporting Linux. But like, nobody even knows your game yet because that's bro. That's cool. But thanks for letting everybody know. Um, this has a small player base. I mean, it's got like over 3,000 reviews on it, which is pretty decent. 
And, um, you know, I'd never heard of it. I'm like, this is kind of our thing. I don't think we've ever talked about it, but it did have a Linux version at one point in time. Unfortunately, that Linux, uh, big evil Linux, was exposing bugs in the game. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, and developer- and I, I really do hope, you know, from genuinely that the random crashing high VRAM usage file access issues that those don't crop up on your Windows build later on. Uh, oh, what, they- hi, hi, high VRAM <laughs> issues, bad OpenGL implementation, <laughs> uh, file access issues. Uh, we don't know what a case sensitive file system is. Yeah. <laughs> also, say you're using Unity without saying you're using yeah. Unity. Uh, <laughs> in you know, you don't want to troubleshoot that. I mean, we, we've seen, you know, other developers come out and say, hey, it was good to track these bugs down because they, they were there. You know, they were cross platform. They just weren't exposed, say, it, be it under Windows. But I mean, this is like smash that Linux export button, fam, and Unity development. Oh, it's, it's still in the trailer. <laughs> it still has the it's penguin there. Linux. <laughs> Wait, so it's, it's, been, it's been two weeks and they rescinded <laughs> Linux support. Uh, that, well, it means that, that well, the. You get, we have to assume, this is 100% assumption on my part, that that was the first time it had ever been tested on Linux Jordan. So, so someone actually like produced a build and uploaded it. And someone well, they, they were right. in early access before, so oh, that's okay. the so, actual so, 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 someone te- <laughs> so someone tested it in an Ubuntu 1604 VirtualBox VM. Ooh, that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> and it, it launched, so printed. Yes. Um, here's the thing, though. I will say this, uh, if you did buy it, for Linux support, and but here, here, this is a very real metric that they were willing to take. If you don't want to play the Proton game, you can get a refund through Steam. Fair. And that was mentioned yeah. in the announcement, which you know, if you're going to say fuck it, he buy, you might as well, you know, give them their money back. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. know what? Th- as that goes. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, I, that's I guess to do it. <laughs> so long, big ambitions. Well, you I, won't I think be that's the right way to do it. It's better than when, like, when you see like turn up boy faces, tax evasions, and people bring up like you know you got to do refunds, right? And they go, oh, hmm, uh, yeah. but, but, but maybe we're just gonna keep. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll keep the Linux version. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, you guys. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is the big news this week. We're all excited about it. Counter Strike Two. Go home, you're drunk. Limited test is up. We can play it. Look at this guy. He's like smiling and he's got orange shades. So, you know, he smokes a lot. Speaking of nicotine, man, <laughs> yellow <laughs> ass teeth. the next era of Counter-Strike begins this summer. Counter-Strike two is not three because fuck you all. Um, here's the thing, man. I'm just, I, I'm Strike surprised four. gentlemen. I'm shocked. I'm shocked because the rumors were true. This is the long awaited sequel. Yes. The one game the internet's it's the been waiting update. on. The, the entirety of the internet has been waiting on a sequel. It is just the wrong game. It wasn't Half Life 3. It was CSGO 2. And um, another problem. Um, the, um, well, there, there's no Linux for the close beta. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's a little borky on Proton, too. Some people have managed mm-hmm. to start the game, but not really, not really play it. Uh, the, the nice thing, though, that it is. That it is a, it will be a free upgrade to CSGO Fuck Yourself, uh, which means that Valve is probably going to try and recoup those costs elsewhere. I wonder if they're going to be adding some new monetization options or just straight up Wait embrace the slot machine lifestyle. Are, are you trying, you dare imply that Valve's going to offer a free upgrade to a free game? Yeah. <laughs> it is literally just an engine upgrade. That's literally yeah. all they're doing. So, yeah. oh, so um, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Hang on. No, they, no, no, they, no. I got to roll this back. You. This is a typical Mateus thing. We got to make sure. So there's not going to be any new maps, no new models, no new items. Oh, they're, they're refactoring a couple of the maps. Uh, they specifically have like the three videos that they posted on their YouTube channel. Uh, they say uh, they're adding volumetric uh, fog and uh, volumetric smoke. Responsive the smoke, smoke Pedro, that, that is an entire new game itself. Honestly, yes. it looks pretty cool. I, I, I kind of like it that It looks idea. pretty good. It, it looks like how uh, you would expect a gelatinous mound of smoke well, to work. I, well, I, 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 like, I like the twist in, in terms of like uh, actually like having smoke grenades be useful in like an FPS mm-hmm. setting because like you can you can make your own views and like or you, you can like and, shoot yeah, through it. And you're shooting it. a high speed projectile through it and it's actually affecting the smoke as finally that's actually working properly. Uh, but yeah, it is. They're all uh, refactoring a couple of the maps. They're basically trimming things down to make it as 
because some of the changes that they Looks make like to Overwatch. Dust too, the, uh, obviously, uh, people weren't entirely happy. But they're, the, I think they're listening at least to a certain se- segment of their community uh, to change that. But yeah, it is just the update to Source Two, and uh, people got all data miney on the files when um, some people started to get um, started to get into the beta. And they found references to Left 4 Dead 3. You know what else had references to Left 4 Dead 3? Dota 2. When they did the Source 2 update. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, if I ever visit a parallel world, I'd like to visit the one where Valve actually released Half-Life 2 Episode 3. I I just want to see how that goes. (laughs) Yeah, but that's also also um, the universe where Artifact is just like the biggest card game in the universe now. (laughs) These maps are... (laughs) Pretty impressive. Like looking the, at the nuke, um, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it it looks good, and like C- Counter Strike is of of all the games that people are still playing that are fucking old as shit. It's probably due for an update. Uh, and it looks and it looks like uh, Valve is looking to like make some more additive changes as opposed to like we're gonna completely change how this game functions. Well, one of the things I was looking at when I was scrolling through here, this probably means something to CS:GO players is sub tick eight updates are um, no longer matter for moving, shooting, or throwing. So when you throw a grenade, it's always gonna land mm-hmm. in the same way. Yeah, because the way that it used to handle um, what you, the inputs that you sent versus what you saw on your screen versus what the server was registering were called ticks and uh if you were you know into competitive uh counter-strike source back in the day you had to set your tick rate if you wanted to play on the you know competitive servers uh and if you weren't you would automatically if you didn't change them you automatically got kicked because no you're not just gonna come in here with a 125 tick rate uh fuck you lower that to like 25 and then we'll talk so it, it, you needed a good internet connection, and um, a mouse would like at least 500 uh, hertz polling if you wanted to. <laughs> so be for the rest of us, it's a rollback net code. Um, it's better than what. <laughs> worse internet still play okay, good. <laughs> Very broad strokes, sure. That, that, that's the point <laughs> of the summary. <laughs> Yeah, let, let, you know, let, let's let's just like spend the next thirty minutes dissecting the TCP/IP stack, and we'll explain. Um, <laughs> let, we 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 gotta we gotta go to Australia next, right? We do uh, via, and, via uh, Hungary. Uh, thank you to um, via Slovakia. <laughs> thank you, uh, Artharin, for uh, making us aware of this. Apparently, there was an update to Revhead. Uh, the thirty eighth um, update. Yeah. Uh, they, this one is special because now it's finally properly supported on the Steam Deck. Now, the game already had a native Linux version. It, it has had a native Linux version since 2017. And I sent them an email at the time. They didn't reply. And when Arthur and brought this up in Discord, I'm like, okay, I'll send them another email. Still didn't reply. So clearly they do not care about us. But Welcome it's a uh, rev head, man. Yeah, yeah, it's car simulation game. And man, you know what? Pedro, I watched this trailer, and holy hell, the frame rate is pretty damn bad. And, um, you know, go, <laughs> for, going for by the announcement, right, a game that was released in 2017, this game is now cur- currently in the um, fixed duplicated controller issues phase of development. And mm-hmm. look at this. This trailer is just a smorgasbord to pop in, man. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Clearly, the developer, you know, didn't have massive amounts of money when they started developing the game, and the, that trailer very much reflects that. But yeah, no, the, the key thing here is very much that you build your own car and then you drive it around the outback. Why? That's no, you can <laughs> race. You can <laughs> see. Look, look at all those V8s. <laughs> look, look at all those depressed people. They're like, "Why are we here watching these cars?" Yeah, the the thing that stood out to me is like so uh, ostensibly, if we go by the name of the developer, this this is a this is a uh, Hungarian developer uh, making a racing game about building your own Australian car. That's a bit of that's a bit of a I don't I don't, I don't know. It's a little strange. I want to say, hey man, <laughs> everybody's got their dream. Yeah, a weird dream, bro. Admittedly, but yeah, but um, yeah. it's also 1999. It's a Wa Wa I don't know Walia. With twenty one dollars of uh, the turbo bundle, yeah, I mean, it's like uh, good on updating. I mean, I think this was just coming back to the game. So here, here's the positive thing: 
at least the Steam Deck is getting games, older games uh, from 2017. People are having uh, developers are having to go back and update them. Why? Because they want them to be deck certified, and then they get to that deck cheddar. Because you want cheddar on your deck. <laughs> well, that's I why uh, you mine. eat Cheetos and then you rub your Cheeto encrusted fingers on your Steam Deck. That's Cheeto. how you know it's a real console. Yeah. <laughs> or m- maybe like a like a Munster or a or a nice smoked Buddha. Doritos, um, smoked Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, are we good? Well. I guess so. Coming up next, we gotta get the bagpipes out because we're playing Amazing Grace for Intel Arc. I don't know. There were things happening and it kind of caught me off guard. Hello, it's the news. Don't worry. (laughs) Uh, We'll we'll get to um, at uh, some point. We do need to shill ourselves out. It's kind of the thing that we do in, you know, I want to say the the middle of the the show. But it's like a third of the way through the show. Yes, it's a long one. It's like you're it's probably like looking at the runtime if you're looking at the video version. I, it's listen, yeah. man. I, I just I, I could ask Bart something. <laughs> what, 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 what is the midpoint of a given Linux Gamecast episode? Oh man, uh, <laughs> this episode of Linux sure, Gamecast is brought to you by I was asking. <laughs> that is PCP. All right, fair, fair enough. Well, if you want, if you want to fund our large language model, we're calling it Brad. It's a competitor to Bard, and it's and it's going to give you all the unhinged answers that Google Bard will not. Head on over to patreoncom slash Gamecast. Fund the madness. Uh, give us some money and you can get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get access to by subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Gamecast. Speaking of, we got to thank Mirror for resubbing for 41 months using that Twitch Prime sub, which you could be using as well. Um, and yeah. uh, dubs. Why? Dub, dub, Dubsig. Dub if I go to dubsy.gg, what happens? A couple of advantages <laughs> uh, if you give us your Bezo bucks, which is very nice of you, is you get access to our Discord. You can always pop in there as well, and uh, you can watch things like, you know, I do the stream on Sundays if you want to go back and just, like, need, like, three or four hours of me talking mad smack while I'm editing these two. Going, quit breathing out of your mouth, Pedro. God damn it. Stop. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Duct tape. Duct tape just... <laughs> I, I I try to suppress it, but I can't. <laughs> just turn into Neo from that scene in the Matrix. Just like, how can you speak when you it, have no mouth? No, it, it, everything's perfectly fine. And by the time we get to the hate mail segment, I'm mad at people, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we got we got uh, game streams we do as well. Uh, you can RSVP to them if you're in our Discord. I'm starting uh, Strange Brigade on Thursday. Then does Track Mania on Tuesdays and Fridays. So want to we got some hot Track Mania action lined up and. Uh, yeah, Tuesdays coming out with 14 fresh tracks. Um, they're curated. To do it. We're currently at the end of the year of 2015. So pretty exciting era in Trackmania Squared. And I guess that counts as retro, a little bit vintage. And it doesn't matter if you know how to race or anything. Trackmania 2 runs. It's, it's an 11, 12-year-old game. Put it on your calculator. Come hop in. Come say hi if you want to. If not, we got people that race with us each and every week that are not on voice or not on video. And that's cool too. And that's awesome. We still have a good time because text communication works. Even if you don't want to type and say, Hey, I'm racing with you. Mm-hmm. You can uh, jo- we got, we- join just for the racing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. You could just be sane and join and be like, Hey, we're just doing that for the racing. <laughs> Drive around in circles. We got a store as well. Store.lingscamecast.com. Buy some merch. You can get t-shirts. You can get tote bags, stickers, coffee cups, hoodies, tote uh, cups, lady, lady totes. shirts, cup toots, bag totes. Uh, toot hoodie toots, toots you know, toots. no booty shorts yet, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> or fanny packs. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can get a hoodie though. You can get the Frank 1999 poster and then have him watch over you while you sleep. We got wish zones as well. Head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one, Ven has one, Jill has one, Pedro has one. Send us stuff up off there and uh, you can give us a note as well and we'll read it on the air for you. What does Pedro want? Pedro desperately would like, uh, okay. Here's the bargain. Here's the bargain. It's a silly thing we do, but you know, it's an easy way to help get, you know, weird, cool shit for us. Um, you can send in a note and whoever you send that to has to read the note and join. We have to read it. Yeah. So if you want to make Pedro say pretty much damn near anything you want, you can do that for as low as 10 quid, 1098, um, which is pretty good deal. What can we get in, uh, Jordan Len? Jordan, Jordan's a little more, a little more expensive to make Jordan talk, uh, but this is Canadian, so you know that is about ten pounds. There you go, um, goose neck for the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Honk. <laughs> you could save Jordan's uh, having to lean forward so much. He could have a nice little goose, and we could oh, we could pat a little goose. 
something. We are. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I got ideas. <laughs> I got ideas. Uh, if you want to get anything for the studio, not only do you end up on the fine upstanding cannibal wall, but uh, I will publicly shame you. But holy hell, that's going to cost you. Uh, Epic system. Still looking to <laughs> do that. So green. <laughs> It's a uh, Epic workstation on a budget, dude. Everything's green on the server side. We got Arc. So, except arcs. for the uh, GPU. we're about to talk about Arc, baby. You mm-hmm. can okay. This is <laughs> tell me this is not a good sign that you can get an Arc A seven seventy limited edition on Amazon for, for one dollar, one dollar under MSRP. <laughs> yeah, well, pr- price imagine, dropped twenty one percent. So no, no one's picking them up. Um, keyboards, curtains, and that monitor which never goes in stock when I want to buy one. So there we go. <laughs> Uh, we thank you for your support. You were fucking awesome. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Come say hi. Come hang out in our Discord. Uh, it, it was interesting. Our, our newest member um, who joined last week is uh, an over-the-road trucker, which is kind of dope. Yeah, uh, Blasphemier. Yeah, I want to call him Blasvix, but that's because I, I've been playing. I've, I, I thought it was. I thought he was. Uh, he Blasphemous was a lady named Mia. Mia. I thought he was someone named Mia who blasphemes a lot, but. Uh. No. <laughs> Blasphemia? <laughs> That's how I got the uh, pronunciation well, guide, is blasphemia? Well, here's what I gotta do. I gotta ask, <laughs> let's, let's because see. I know there is a Twitch streamer that does Linux-related content that streams from their truck. Mm. So i like to know if it's the same person. If not, it's like, small world, man. <laughs> Linux truckers, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> LTC, Linux trucker Dope cast. as hell. So let's start off this new segment in traditional fashion with nothing better than the finest updated can I cut off Penguin Ring before I get to that? Yeah, I can look at that. No one even noticed, Ben. Uh, NVIDIA driver news. <laughs> yes. In true LGC tradition, it's usually it used to be either the uh, NVIDIA driver news or uh, Mesa. Mesa's been uh, not doing, you know, a lot of revolutionary stuff, but they keep on releasing updates. Yeah, I don't need to fix profession, bro. It's open source lateness, <laughs> Pedro. You're your peasant. But uh, no, NVIDIA is always good to look through the... Um, the change log to see what they're doing though you need to keep in mind that their change log that they're presenting there is not the complete one if you want the complete one you can just extract it from the uh, driver package but yeah no this one uh the the one that jumped out at me was setting the icon location to icons high color uh with so it can be properly overridden by your own choice of icon theme which should have been you know done like 20 years ago in video but you know it's good it's there now. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, this is the beta roundup too. So uh, a lot mm-hmm. of the improvements that showed up in the last beta, like the fast decompression speed, is now available for everyone who uses the run file. I guess if you're yep. getting your Linux your uh, Nvidia drivers from your package manager, you're not affected by this, but your packagers are. Yeah. Um. And you you agree with me, Jordan? That that that's fast. It's, it's speedy. Oh, yeah, like, like n- night and day. Like I w- I was expecting like min- minor improvement, but before it was like bar goes. <laughs> Right. And then middle, and then you right. wait like 20 minutes, but now it's just like... You zoop. genuinely had like a second to question life choices after you did, did that yeah. one thing. Now it's just boom, boom, boom. It is, uh, it's currently working, using them right now to send the signals to your eye holes. And uh, that's really all I look for in a NVIDIA release. It's like, yeah, everything works. Uh, I would like an updated desktop experience. I mean, I don't want the... Hear me out. I don't want the don't, GeForce Don't get rid experience. of the... <laughs> Right. Don't get rid of like the classic banner with like the the Don't LCD you dare monitor, touch our CRT. The, yeah, the right? CRT, and, yeah. <laughs> it's the the classic man. Once they get rid of that, that's gonna be like the end of an era. It well, is the only place it still lives, man. You know, yeah. yeah. So even on was... Windows, the Nvidia control panel on Windows looks woefully outdated compared to everything else. Well, speak. I, well, I mean, think about it. Like that control panels look like that control panel since I can remember nvidia like that is that that was well i mean nvidia like, said you know what we got it right on the first one because the first time that that gui showed up that's what it looked like yeah and like what they've added a couple tick boxes here or there but mm-hmm. that's that's kind of it and now but, they and, need to add those options but for the wayland sessions too because if you open the <laughs> nvidia settings on the wayland session you get nothing just a window I, with well, nothing listen, in I'm it. That oh, NVIDIA Pedro, driver's it's like, like owning an AMD card. on wayland <laughs> that's the thing amd never had um a proper uh control panel ever yes right. there was one technically with fgl rx uh, but that shit was broken uh, more so than the count. actual drivers no i mean <laughs> when i was playing around with a uh, first setting up a uh, rectangle jordan's box here in the studio and using the um 5600g that was something i asked pedro because pedro was like i have an amd gpu now um it's like where is how can i set uh 
you know, color shifts, hues, balance. Where, where's the control? Where's the open source control panel to do that? You under use AMD? the one that comes with your desktop environment. <laughs> Uh, uh, hey, <laughs> but hey, who, who knows? Maybe, m- m- maybe I'll end up with an art card and I can experience a whole new thing. Of, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, check this out. Good news, everybody. Um, Pat, you might know Pat. He runs that little company, that little upstart called Intel. He's the CEO. He says, on a bittersweet note, we're saying farewell to Raja. They're both, uh, and another guy? Who's the other guy? Uh, Rahinder, who I guess got a Rahinder Thacker, who's got to drop the Intel from his Twitter handle now. President of Intel <laughs> Foundry Services. And you know, Raja, you know him, you love him. He's been around forever. Formerly of AMD, the mind that brought us the questionable product stack called Vega. Uh, he's now left the building. And what do we think? What do we think? Uh, do we immediately go booga booga, get scared, <laughs> or do we go? Shit, this is Intel. Okay, Booga Booga gets scared. Uh, yeah, or k- kind of. <laughs> or it's Intel. Booga Booga get terrified. Right. Uh, does gentlemen, uh, yes or no, from either? Does Arc survive the summer? Can, I hope. Can, can Intel keep summer safe? I, I hope I, so. Yeah. As, 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 yeah. <laughs> as as much as I really hope that like the corpo overlords there aren't going to fall victim to their short sightedness, as Ven said, it's fucking Intel. It's Intel. So, <laughs> so like you know, you know, I, I to this I will say, fucking prove us wrong, surprise mm-hmm. us, please. Just yeah, just make us eat shit. I w- would love to see it. Cause like what R- Raja announced, he's moving to like a new startup. That could be for literally any reason. It could be because of he's sick of corporate meddling. It could just be, hey, my work here is done. I'm gonna move yeah. on to the next cool. He thing. wants to go work for AI generative AI for gaming. He's like. Good luck. Uh, seriously, so, good luck with that. I, I mean, so, so it, it's all, it's all GPU dependent, you think so about, someone right. who knows a lot about GP, GPU is going to be well suited for that. So maybe, maybe he could have been in Sally. and could have didn't. He's done everything that he set out to do. And like Jim Keller, right? And you think yeah. about Jim Keller when Jim Keller was at AMD and he taped out, uh, you know, was the spearhead, I'm assuming that was the correct way for the Ryzen stack mm-hmm. that we're still playing around. And when he was done, he's like, peace, I'm out. So maybe that's Raja thing. Like, it, 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 don't. Don't panic, but again, uh, yeah, to what Vin said, it's fucking Intel, man. Um, yeah. If Intel's like, yeah, we're not going to do Battle Mage. I'm like, <laughs> that's the. Hmm. I, I, that, I think I think they're at least going to do Battle Mage. They're gonna, I hope if, so. if, if, if they're going to kill it, it's going to be like, oh, we released it. We just never told anyone. Oh, our market numbers are trash. We're going to have to kill our GPU division. Uh. Um. <laughs> We just need somebody to break the string. I mean, and it, this is, this is like how hard it is to break a duopoly. You know, we have the duopoly between AMD, formerly ATI and NVIDIA, formerly 3DFX. Um, Intel is struggling to even get a, like a little pinky toe of a foothold into this. And they're learning like, it's hard writing these drivers thing. Yeah, that was pretty difficult. And but they use the XVK. They were smart about it. When uh, you know they, they the, gave that up DX9, and they used DXVK. That's yeah, it was like when they couldn't figure out how to get DX9 and DX10 and DX11 to work properly, they used technology that was already there. Uh huh. Well, you know that that gave me a little bit of hope because that means somebody actually walked in there and was like, "Cut the shit! <laughs> Can um, we stop we, reinventing is, the yeah, wheel? These things got to start working, man. This <laughs> NIMBY's now. Um, if we're going to be like player three, this is like the really the only legitimate player three. And listen, I have no love for Intel. I have no love for AMD and I have absolutely no love for NVIDIA. These are soulless corporations. Like don't, don't get attached to your corporation waifu. Um, China would really be, cause there's the, there's two or three big players in China, but the they're, they're VR or whatever. Yeah. Well, no, they, they that company license, or I guess like mm-hmm. in a way kind of owns the power VR stack. I know who you're talking about, yeah, I don't, but I don't remember. Media tech. Uh, no, um, these they're shipping GPUs, but they are generations behind order of magnitude. Like, you know, well, five, yeah, the, the, six the, years the, behind. Their, their fab tech is just like decades behind. And that's oh, like, yeah. like that, that's a that's consequence of uh, victory X-Men laps loss. of having a 14 nanometer solution. Mm-hmm. Like, so a long, long time to catch up. I want NVIDIA to stick with this. I want to see Battle Mage mature. I want to have that real third player to 
stop this wonderful, you know, uh, or corporations love you. So you have a choice between your $999 card yeah, or to, your $1,300 card. And, and to, to that point, like Intel doesn't even need to beat AMD or NVIDIA. They just need to offer something at a the price point that is not like, mm-hmm. that is not $500 be competitive. for low end. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's like with AMD when they were releasing Ryzen, same thing. It's like, okay, it doesn't need to be better than Intel's processors. It just needs to be competitive. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing now. It's just the roles are a little bit reversed. It doesn't need to be the RTX 3080 or the 4080 Ti uh, or the 7900 XTX. It just needs to be competitive. But yeah, we've already it, seen I, I mean, what the, in the, the, the leak earlier this week uh, <laughs> with the 4060s being 8 gigs. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the $500 4050s because they're just going to be like, yeah, you know, low mid-range <laughs> GPU, $500, please. Thank you. I mean, the 3050 was kind of matching the 1080 in performance, and uh, if you were playing uh, VKD3D or DX12 games on Linux, uh, the, the, the performance was much better on the 3050 than it was on the 1080. Yeah, they're still uh, gonna they're they're still gonna charge you five hundred dollars for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody's it's, it, it's a weird time. It's a weird time. We need. I mean, somebody like Intel could focus on because nobody's servicing the low end right now. Yeah. And AMD and NVIDIA are equally pretending that that market segment can get just not even pretending. They're just saying that's market segment. Can AMD get effectively slow. made the market worse by releasing the 6400 and 6500, which had severely gimped PCIe Gen 4 only and only four lanes of it uh, for now their full size graphics AMD cards. AMD released a laptop part. In a PCIe full on. They wanted PCIe. to release something. <laughs> Mm. That was bad. That was g- genuinely bad. I'm not excusing it. But there was reasons behind it. They didn't like set this thing up from like clean cloth and like let's build the jankiest GPU we've had in a long time. And, like no, 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 no. They, they, they uh, built this from spare parts. No. So may- may- maybe, maybe, maybe the uh, dedicated solution is a little too expensive. What about the what about the integrated solution? No, man. On, on, on the SOC, you can't get a big Mac with Vulcan. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Asahi (laughs) Lina has something to say about that. Yeah, everyone's favorite anime character who's developing a Linux driver. You know what? We live in we live in a weird timeline, man. (laughs) Whatever. Um, She yeah. So she's got a blog post up um, about how uh, they've gone from having a basic user space driver for um, Vulkan in on the M1 to having a full user API that is able to run Zenotic at 800 FPS. Uh, which is significantly faster than it running on Mac, although it's using Rosetta, but whatever. Um, yeah, so giant ass blog post, 99% of it is way above my head, although uh, she does a really good job of breaking down sort of like what the pieces are and presenting a good picture of like how 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 they all fit together for my lay brain. Uh, most, most of this boils down to um, trying to implement explicit sync, which is what games want, in a primarily implicit sync world, which is what Linux desktops want. So, um, lot, lots of, lots of, uh, lots of technical breakdown. You can read the article. The links to all of this are in our show notes. I, I just love this trend though, of like Asahi Linux using the M1 and M2 hardware, like better and more effectively than Mac OS to the point where like, there are hardware features in the M1 and M2 that the Mac, Mac just does not use, but Linux yep. has them implemented because why the fuck not? Also, and, also it, it, Asahi OpenGL passes more compliance tests than OS 10, which is hilarious. Uh, both GL and, uh, well, I- even if you were to get Vulcan running through, uh, what's it called? The Mol- translation Molten. from metal Molten. to Vulcan? Molten, Molten, VK. Molten VK. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, proper mental graphics Pedro, acceleration. It's called mental. <laughs> it's called manwich. No, that's the people who use it. Uh, sorry, Farrell. Uh, the... <laughs> Uh, proper graphics acceleration and support is like the big one for uh, Azahi. They managed to get just about everything else already kind of sort of working, but the graphics were like the last big thing. And this is a very big step. This is a very big step because even in the, uh, the, um, like the Zonotic, uh, Zonotic comparison that they were using, they were um, running Zonotic in Mac OS via Rosetta was rendering at a lower resolution because Rosetta doesn't do retina. So it was uh, at a lower resolution and it was only getting 600 FPS and the native Onazahi was at the native resolution at 800 FPS. So it was rendering more pixels, 
more faster. Yeah. <laughs> does that mean it's more good? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> more, it more, more better. Implicitly so. <laughs> you, you could, you, one could possess a crippling fear of fast Explicitly pixels. so. Explicitly or explicitly so, so yes. Nah. <laughs> it's, it's cool. I mean, unless you're somebody who bought an M1 to play games on Mac with Mac OS, and you're just <laughs> looking at this, you're like, get fucked. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Linux uh, so, comes in and just does better everything. <laughs> so uh, the, the next step for this, speaking of playing games on your Mac, uh, as uh, Asahilina is saying that the next step is actually getting this working with uh, FEX, the... Um, the uh, x86 code emulator so that th- you can actually run some real boy games. That's on, the big one. Yeah. On your M1. <laughs> that, that's going to be cool. That's By December, so cool. do you think we'll have a triple A something running? Triple A from what year? Uh, yes. I, I, I was vague for reasons. Because <laughs> Half Life yes. Two is probably going to be running by the end of the year, before the end of the year. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh man, you, th- you think you think you can run the like the recompiled ARM one? I wonder how that runs on fucking M1. Mayhaps. We, yeah. Yeah, that could, that could, that could be pretty good. That good news, pretty everybody. Good. Heroic Games Launcher has an announcement that we want to tell you about. Uh, they've just published Heroic on Snap Store. Now, so it's one more way of installing Heroic on Linux. That's right. Flatpak, Snap, or regular, uh, or original recipe. I don't know, extra crispy. Come check it out, which you can, by heading over to snapcraft.io forward slash heroic. And... Uh, Let's see what versions we have. That this version, the, this the edge version. Yes, this is it's their, only uh, the uh, get. They just pull from uh, get head, and away we go. Uh, it's uh, yeah, no, it, it's why <laughs> are canonical actively paying you for this? Because if not, then why? <laughs> I, I just like the fact that now heroic is like even more available <laughs> on Linux than literally anything on the Epic Game Store. <laughs> Portugal doesn't like uh, snaps. I mean, they're. <laughs> Spain represents Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, and Zorin. Yeah, Zorin. people, people are loving those snaps. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I don't know. More better, more the better. Uh, if you are, you can install Snap on anything. I don't think anybody goes mm-hmm. out of their way to install Snap on anything that it. I go out of my way to not um, install Snap. <laughs> yeah, I go out of my way to remove it whenever it's already installed. Yeah. So if you don't know what <laughs> Snap is, Snap is like Flatpak. Uh, it's containerization software on the desktop, and it serves its purpose in some way, shape, form, or fashion, despite people having issue or taking issue with it, which I think rightfully so. Um, snaps. <laughs> It's, it's it's an IoT tech that they're trying to like make mainstream. We're we're gonna it, make it. It has work. its use case. Uh, I won't deny that it does, but uh, not the way that Canonical wants to shove it down in everyone's throats, especially for desktop users. No, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's plenty of stuff on the Snapcraft store. I think probably the biggest point of contention I have, which then again, it's interesting to sit back and watch because the back end for Snap, the store itself, is all controlled by Canonical. That's so it's interesting to see how that model is playing out versus Flatpak, you know, from IBM, which is just more of like Wild West, do what you want, you know, set it up. Let's see what evolves. And to be fair, the Flatpak, the entire stack is open source, while uh the Snap yeah. Or it's it's it's, it's behind the CLA, <laughs> or is it proprietary, or is it behind the contributor license agreement? No, nobody I, can touch it. It's not available. Yeah, uh, <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, prove me wrong. That yeah, that's as far as we know. I don't know if something's changed in the meantime, but yeah, it's also it was... there is a language called Moose. <laughs> moose, it, moose ten, baby. Moose. <laughs> moose is not new, baby. Um, huh. I mean, is, is, is there is there a room with moose? Dude, that would be terrifying. Uh, <laughs> each, each to their own. Because a lot of people, yeah, I see Synthal, bro. Like the Firefox Snap thing, I think people are very cross about that, even though like Firefox is like, yeah, we have a non Snap version too. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could just go and get the PPA from Mozilla and install proper uh, Firefox. <laughs> for me, I said it, I have to stay in for both Flatpak and Snaps. I don't really pick a favorite but i didn't have too bad a time playing around with a fedor silver lube mm-hmm. you know like two weeks ago if like, given yeah. the choice i'll use flat packs yeah. although i yeah. prefer to use app images because they're just easier 
I think with me, it's uh, every time I have to deal with flat packs, it's always I have a problem with it because it's always coming from OBS. Right. <laughs> so my yeah, brain... that's 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 the one case where flat pack still has a way to go. Or um, one. Um, yeah, that's definitely one of them that like anything that requires a lot of external stuff, like plugins and things like that. It's, 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 hey, just sit back and watch, see if solutions come. Yeah. And well, uh, if you like snaps, you know, Pedro's going to call you a big poo poo head, but I'm like, whatever. <laughs> if you like snaps, yes, there's something, something is definitely wrong with you. I'm sorry. Email Pedro <laughs> and say, Hey Pedro, will you please dunk on my filthy snap using ass? And Pedro will write back and be like, yeah, get wrecked, son. Period. Pedro Mateus. <laughs> All right. Well, let's he- let's head on down to Snap City. It's time for the chairquisition, where we're gonna get we're gonna look very hard for a door and sometimes fail to find it. You feel that? You feel the vibes? It's moody time. This it's time for the chairquisition, where we take a game and we run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions, and then and only then do we whisper softly in your ear a score from one to four chairs. One chair means that it's garbage. Four chairs means it's amazing. This week we're taking a look at Apocalyptic Vibes, done by Amanito Computing, done on the GZ Doom engine. Oh yeah, it looks it. Uh, what is? You can pick it up for about twenty bucks US. What is it? A vintage immersive first-person shooter on GZ Doom, with an atmosphere of cold and melancholic, melancholic post-apocalypse, elements of diesel punk, and a mix of retro style and realism. Romantic shoegaze as a soundtrack. We gotta thank Amanito Computing for sending us some keys. Uh, I guess let's let's get into it. Pedro is the one person who likes this game. <laughs> I do. I like what it's doing, but we'll get to that. Very much uh, like every other GZ Doom game, smack in the middle screen. As soon as you open it, doesn't open on the primary screen, the leftmost screen. No, no, middle screen. Uh, but it does work out of the box on both the desktop and the deck uh, on the beta branch on the deck. It defaults to the WASP config if you have Steam input enabled. So. It also means that controllers will all work out of the box, uh, but it is GZ Doom. It's going to work everywhere. As for the graphics, well, Strider likes to give me stick for um, <laughs> liking desaturated things, although this game somehow manages to be just slightly over the light, even for me. It's all brown and gray, mostly gray. It is, uh, and the sprites are probably either the devs or their friends. <laughs> Uh, those cans, there's the these cans that if you walk over, they make real loud noises and all the enemies know you're there then. Uh, but yeah, those cans have some really high-res mud texturing. So yeah, the music is nice uh, when you're near a radio or any kind of other receiver to listen to it. Because there is no other, there is no constantly playing background music. It It needs to be physically near you. And as for the fun, I don't genuinely think that uh, this is supposed to be fun. It's just like not everything that quacks is a duck. Not all GZ Doom games are boomer shooters. This one falls squarely into the stalker subgenre of FPS RPGs. It's bleak, it's lonely and forgiving, very unforgiving. I'm playing through it on hardcore because that seems to be the recommended way to get the full experience. Um... When you die, your max HP gets dinged, and you can only recover it by consuming the tea. Uh, you, or you light bonfires, or you hit certain milestones in the story. And yeah, you can go and add the uh, Souls-like tag on the Steam store page. Uh, I liked Stalker and the semi-open world, uh, semi-Metroidvania style that it had going, uh, where you backtrack, uh, backtrack through places that you'd already been, to do more things now that you had better weapons or better gear, you were more protected, you could actually, you know, survive the radiation exposure and do all of that. Uh, this is a much more linear experience. Apocalyptic Vibes is, you know, except for the occasional dead end where there's some goodies there that you can pick up, some filters, some matches, uh, a little bit of food, whatever. But yeah, n- I'm nothing against, you know, strictly linear games, but... This time it feels like it could have had something, anything, to feel a little bit less bleak. I like what it does, but it doesn't look as good as it could, and it, it, it's a little sparse in content, so it gets three chairs. I do like it, but... Mm, 
<laughs> the cheesiest of dumbs. So Oops, cheesy. One. There's a Jordan. Hi. Hi. Hello. It's me. I'm Jordan. I run Fedora 37 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. And this game launches out of the box. And it really, really does just pick whatever the fuck monitor it wants. You can, like, knock it down to windowed mode and then drag it to the screen you want and full screen it. And then when you switch it back to windowed mode, it just jumps back to whatever screen it started on. It's good stuff. Um, it's got all, there isn't really much of a soundtrack, more of a soundscape, a mostly empty one that startles you when all of a sudden it makes a noise. There is some music. It did start playing eventually, but damn, it took me a while to figure out like, oh, there actually is background music here. I thought this was just like someone else listening to music in the house. Uh, visually it is a GZ do game, doom game. And that is all. The color palette is very muted. I actually missed the revolver in the first part of the game because it blended in. It was a it was a smudge. I'll talk about how I found that later, but nonetheless, it is it is kind of monocolor, monochrome. Fun wise, I'm after an hour of wandering around aimlessly, I finally caved and I watched a video and I found the door that I was supposed to go through to get to the area with the actual enemies. Ven's going to tell you a lot more about this wonderful little experience. But it really does capture the, the, the punishing environment of the post-apocalypse in which you would get like one or two shots of your gun off realistically before a bullet found its way in between your eyes and that's it. Game over. It, much like any GZ Doom game, you gotta reload your save after you die. It doesn't do that automatically, which is a bit annoying because you're going to be doing that quite a bit. Also, the quick save and quick load buttons aren't mapped by default, which is a bit annoying. You're going to be save scumming quite a bit through this. I know I was. and. Yeah, my, my experience is very similar to Ven's, where you wander around, you get lost, eventually you get to the point where there's actual gameplay, and then it's live, die, repeat. And, I don't, I don't know, some people like that methodical challenge to their, to their shooters, but, but I, I don't. This game, it's, it's a functional game, I think GZ Doom is doing a lot of the heavy lifting on like the technical side of the review, but gameplay-wise, it, it didn't click with me, I'll give it two cheers. Oh, that's so oh, sad. All right, so over here on Debian Bookworm, uh, it's soon to be Debian 12? Yeah, that sounds right. Sure. Uh, runs with no issues. It's the 1920X Threadripper, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe drives, a 3060 for GZ. Dude, come on. Vulcan power, though. Hey, it's got that going for it. But just like everybody else, bam, right there in that middle monitors where it likes to start. Fortunately, there was GameScope to the rescue. I was able to throw that on there. Click on the screen when you're done waiting for something to show up. That took me a minute because I'm not a clever man. It was sitting there at the intro screen with nothing on the screen until you click on the screen. Then the menu appears. Okay. I mean, it has plenty of options. Options galore, you might say, because, again, it's built on a GZ Doom. As for the fun man, uh, like Jordan, I spent the first 33 minutes of the game trying to figure out uh, that first bit leading to the baddies, that door. Fuck Not that door. Obvious. Um, I got through just by process of elimination. I was going through pressing E on everything. If you look like a door, I pressed E and eventually it opened. The levels, they're empty. They're big and chocked full of absolutely fuck all nothing to do. Um, even like just a little bit of lore would have helped out, like some old photos and papers laying around. That would have gone a long way to breaking up the like. There's just nothing here. This looks like uh, levels I used to make in, back in the 90s. In Doom, when I didn't understand anything about level design, I'm like, why are my levels so boring? But I mean, I guess yeah, it's supposed to like give you the sense of, of something else. It's just a whole lot of boring on my end. Um, all this time, you're spent alone uh, pursuing um, the emptiness. You're collecting ammo. There's some cold coffee to be had, which isn't too bad. Then I went through that magical door that Jordan was talking about. Patreon went through himself. And I got killed to death by a smudge on the other end of the screen. Seriously. I was like walking straight up to two guys. It turned out. Trying to think, what, what are these things? And they just turned around and capped me. And you die a lot. You better get used to that. And you die a lot with such quickness and viciousness. It's like, boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead. Okay. Save scum. That's how you get done with it. Took me another 30 minutes to live, die, repeat my way through like the first main segment. That first area. And all I was feeling was just tired. I was like, Lived, I repeat. I'm like, oh, I, I, I won. Yay, hollow victory. Tired of just reloading the game over and over and over. Save. All right, back to reloading. And the AI 
AI in this game is just old school murder bots that go full T800 on you the second you're within like not point not not eight nine percent of one of their vision cones, man. Like they just come at you and you're dead. You can hide. They know where you're at. There's no point running. You're dead. Just give it up. Um, and I enti- games like this. I thought about like I enjoyed my time. I played with uh, Metro Last Light uh, when I went back and played it on Ranger difficulty. But this this was like the bad type of punishing gameplay. I wasn't really feeling re- rewarded here. Like this this was like playing a really cocked up deathmatch level filled with like the same 1990s era murder bots, the one that can just one shot you from across the level without looking in your direction because fuck you, that's why. The best I can tell from the reviews, there's only about two and a half hours of gameplay. And uh yeah, uh, this is coming in uh, priced at nineteen ninety nine. That's one point one two Hollow Knights. So I, I just, mm, I mean, it functions. Like, it, I don't know who the game's for. Apparently, gentlemen, I'm gonna give it two cheers. It's for Pedro, kinda, maybe. I, I guess like the, me, the inspiration me. there was very much like the the Stalker series, which was imagine Metro but slower, more tactical, more deliberate, more. He- and, more heavily focused on the RPG elements. And this is even slower? And this is even slower. With less RPG? With less RPG. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, and a lot less content in general, which is the big problem. And yes, it is pretty short as well. And I am playing on hardcore because literally everyone that, um, I, like YouTubers that I follow that play it, it's like, yeah, you got to play it on hardcore. Otherwise, you're not going to find any uh thing that's even remotely challenging about the game so all right hardcore mode it is uh and those are the only two options that the game gives you and normal and to, like what and jordan hardcore. and i were talking about if this was really like the apocalypse we'd be eating and we'd be carving up uh, the bodies like oh, that's yeah, yeah. food baby <laughs> yeah. la- 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 real, real lack of cannibalism right. if you if you want if you want that whole discussion you gotta listen to the pre-pre super shows i'm just gonna plug the patreon because boom patreon.com forward slash linux game cast all right baby let's get out of here all right, coming up next, we're, we're popular with the youths, you oh, guys. Oh, shit. LGC for kids. <laughs> or at least one of them. <laughs> youth. The end. It has finally come. Yes. Uh, for this episode, anyway. Do join us uh, around this time next week. I know that Daylight Savings just kicked in if you're in the GMTs, so look Vince. out for that. Y- you lost an hour. On Sunday, you're probably watching this later on or listening to it more likely. Hey, man, why is the sun still on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Someone turn uh, that off. If you'd like to say your piece about how long we uh, go on for, especially me, uh, you can do so. You can do so very, very easily. You can go to linuxgamecast.com, uh, hit the contact button, fill out the forum. There's some caveats at the top. If you'd like to, you know, have us uh, have a look at your game, make sure you include three keys or, you know, tell us of a, a, a way that we can all play the game. You know what? Otherwise, Here's the thing. I want you to include four keys because that genuinely fucks with us. We don't know what to do with it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Usually we, we, empty we, we or Sandy to, or someone just gets we, we the try, key. We, we've tried to do giveaways and then it's just like, oh, and then no, 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 one, no one signed up. Okay. Well. I don't believe it. I'll never win anything. Enter giveaways, man. Have you ever won a giveaway? I won, I won a giveaway from AMD when I was in university, um, graduate school. Uh, it was just a random website. You know, it was like one of the what passed for a news website back in the day. And I entered some sweepstake and I won a motherboard and a CPU from AMD. Yeah, so sometimes that happens. Yeah, I, I don't six know. months later, I get an email. I'm like, what is this? Ooh, what? Oh, fuck yes. I think I've only ever won. <laughs> it's been won downhill one, ever since. <laughs> I think I've only ever won one raffle that I've actually entered. Well, yeah, you're, you're right. You know, some, sometimes like nobody enters and you're the one dude yeah. there. And, uh, your, your name gets I won, picked by default. I uh, won one in um, elementary school. I think that was the one time I won in a kind of raffle type situation. Yeah, my, now, mine, what mine do we was do also a, in school. Here's what we do. As adults, uh, Pedro and I, uh, we <laughs> place the one bid on the eBay auction, knowing that somebody's going to snipe us at the end. But it feels yes. good to pretend. And then sometimes like. they don't. It's like, oh, okay, I'll give you the twenty bucks. There you go. <laughs> womp, womp. Not like the kids, man. The kids don't enter raffles at all. 
No, not unless CSGO skins are involved. Well, this is from Seb. <laughs> pushes up their glasses and says, them. actually, I am quite far behind on my COD podcast. However, COD that will past. not stop. COD pass, COD man. Past. It's, it's COD <laughs> pasta. However, that will not stop me from responding to LGC 545 about two months after release. You said there are no teenagers listening to your show. I say nay. I am 19 years old, technically still a teenager, and have been listening to your show since I was about 17. Obligatory. By the way, I use Arch. I've been using Arch for the past three years, though I'm considering changing over to OpenSUSE Leap to get a more stable distribution <laughs> on my desktop. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Old claim. Uh, <laughs> as I don't have the time to maintain Arch anymore, I'm also running Papa Spoopoos on my laptop, but that's not a meme, so where's the fun in mentioning that? I have nothing further to say. Keep up the good work. How dare you. <laughs> how dare you no, expect the open open Suze Suze Leap that, to be a yeah. <laughs> see see you had, a, you had us fooled and he said that you're like ah yeah, oh, right, right, right yeah right, the, the, right. yeah Se- seb is actually like 57 years old he's not actually seb. like everything was believable up until that point like, yeah, yeah yeah i mean the first half i wasn't gonna lie but, uh. <laughs> i guess like technically like 19 um yeah looking at our uh YouTube or even the Spotify demographics. It's fun looking at the uh, Spotify demographics. Like people also listen to it. It's just like Slayer and shit like that. I was like, yeah, all that checks. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, metal and, um, but yeah, like we, we don't even have like a blip until we get to like 24. Then it goes like, and it skyrockets and stays there until like 56, 58 and starts tapering off. That's cause they keep dying after that. Yeah. <laughs> Short life. So they can't listen to too much of this, man. It's like death. Death podcast, it's like a death note, but wasn't podcast. <laughs> they get to that age, it's like no, no, too juvenile for me. Sorry, they, they start <laughs> running Windows. <laughs> get to that age, and then their heart just stops. But oh man, um, see, we don't know what it's like though, because podcast didn't exist when we were teenagers. I guess the closest no. equivalent to this would be like Coast to Coast AM, right? Like, well, that that was we- fun weird, to listen to though, for like yeah. the weird shit, right? Yeah. We- yeah, weird ass radio shows at like two AM were on public access or something. I guess podcasts were kind of becoming a thing when uh, I was 18-ish and I went to university. Uh, that's when, you know, the iPod became a thing and mm. the radio show t- uh, style of uh, content that you downloaded, put you in your iPod. Yeah, they, they, they were the, iPod the, the podcast. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's where the pod and podcast came yeah. from. <laughs> Damn it, Apple. I don't know, man. It's like a weird thing. You just accept podcasts have always existed at this point, right? It, yeah. I, I, I guess it really just is like an evolution of like radio programs, right? Where it, it's like the, the Netflixification, right? Like once upon a time, oh, you had to be listening to the radio at this specific time. Now it's just like, hey, here's an MP3. You can listen to it. it it's anymore. the video on demand that's Pretty actually available on demand. <laughs> and you don't have to go through like, you know, I even helped, um, but I hear did a, uh, 100 FM a free non-commercial and like to apply to that that took like seven years to get back and a couple of grand to get a non-commercial radio license everybody as a kid I don't know the youth we didn't have any hopes of it growing up but at least here in the states I guess you could have had a like very legitimate like idea of like running a pirate radio station mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by the way London used to be invested with those <laughs> I don't know about today but um I wanted to do that did you Jordan like want to have like your own yeah, like the there, broadcast there, there, thing. So, is, yeah, there, there, there's always like the the fantasy in the back of your mind of like you know, oh man, the the you get to be the tastemaker, right? Like mm-hmm. the the radio DJ gets to pick what everyone listens to. Man, I want I want to be you. It, I want to be the guy in the drive in the passenger <laughs> seat to be who controls gone. the radio. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> I, I think I think it's very much that same impulse. That's um yeah, it's like a strange thing like that. I, I guess some people just don't, never have that drive and democratizing it. With podcast, some people really shouldn't have that drive, but that's not going to stop I- us. <laughs> <LC Hello. Sickers. laughs> oh man, um, we we got to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. On that bombshell, you can always find us pulling out of the airwaves, pulling on the airwaves, pulling over the airwaves, <laughs> pulling, pulling out airwaves. of the airwaves. <laughs> Pulling airwaves all <laughs> over our face, chest, and neck. You know it. You love it. Um, 8.30 Eastern. Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. We're doing that thing. Get a hold of me. I'm in our Discord. I'm talking in our Discord all the time. If you're a Twitch sub or a patron, that's something I always committed to. Like, we're in there talking day in and day out. You know, if you ever need to get a hold of us. Or just send an email. At Venstone on Twitter or uh, at Ven on our Mastodon instance. Mast.LinuxGamecast.com. 
I'm Jordan. I don't like airwaves. I like sea waves and the wave motion cannons and the waves that they do in baseball games when everyone just stands up in the chair. You can do that with me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or Mastodon. I'm Frojo at mast.linuxgamecast.com. And if you want to see me floating in the motion of your ocean, you can go to Twitter at an accounted for F O U R. Or uh, if you don't want to see me at all, I suppose you can go to mast.linuxgamecast.com. And look for at an accounted four with the actual number four at the end. Or, or just I'm close your there. eyes. Just close your eyes, and then you don't have to look at Pedro. <laughs> it's a uh, steps in between. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's roll some credits. All right. Hey, just like apocalyptic vibes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's time for those credits. To fly off into the star set, into sunset. The, st- the star set, yes. Yeah, yeah. We've got to thank our advisors, Omega, <laughs> Star Theron, executive producers, Mark Fram, Scott, 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 Scott Mike, uh, Mike David. G. Yeah, drummer, Tomaj, Pebble, those guys, Chicago Kicks Ass, Super Dust Out, Empty, and G E N Blasmia. Blasmia. It's like a yes. Kia, but with Blasmia. <laughs> I, I, I keep wanting to make it like like Virgin, Bolivia. and Justin Frostclaw, Nubbin. Darkwing, System T, Dunzing Drew, Ogie One, and Kyrillo. The Death Notes, you know him, you love him. Got like Dak in there, Stevens Isn't in there. Isn't Basil on there twice? In there. Or is I'm that a different needs. Basil? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Foxdog. I can't Hope. tell, Pedro. I can't read. <laughs> Stinky Dev. Alex. All the chairlings. <laughs> Giovanni, Joanna, Gronk, Belonga, Paulo, yeah. Brock. Brock. Craig, Linux new Christopher, Mirror, Rohit. Big Steven, thanks to Mirror and Rohit Steve for uh, finishing B. off uh, Borderlands with us. <laughs> right? Air yeah. Ducky, you know what? Steve, Steve we B. play gaming Steve PT. D spec. Line up state again. Jack and Strider. Carl Beat Mike, D spec. Jack the Ripper. It's not for less. John E. Chef Gamatron. You know it. And DS and I gotta fix the fate on that. Uh, other DS and Joe and Aromatic Dev. Ha, there. See? I cheated. Uh-huh. Back. I wrote it back here. <laughs> aromantic <Can> dev <laughs> aromatic dev yes, aromatic what is it aromatic <laughs> stinky he's very stinky very stinky well hopefully we learned something hopefully we learned more than what bard was able to tell us and um <laughs> nothing which wasn't yeah. very much yeah just, don't just made made up shit remember. frank's a google engineer did you know that <laughs> don't use your bard and polite company die and fire everyone we'll see you next week You've been holding out on us. You got you're getting that six finger fang salary, man. That's the uh, that's, uh that, that's the Bard soundtrack. I thought you know the Bard's in the room. You better start running. <laughs> I mean, Bard is the AI that you introduced to your parents. Five dudes. <laughs>